Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. The story I bring you is one of the most curious I've ever encountered. For what happened to pretty little Amy Prentice shouldn't happen to, well, to you. Put yourself in Amy's place. You arrive one day at the home of the fiancé, Jack Morton, and... Jack. Jack, darling, I'm here. I beg your pardon? I'm here. I, I mean, here I am. You're here, all right, but who are you? Who am I? Look, if you're some kind of saleswoman, Jack, you're really not... please. Please stop kidding. I'm Amy. Amy Prentice. Your fiancé. You're crazy. That's what you are. I've never seen you or heard of you in my life. <laughs> mystery drama, The Bride That Wasn't, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by George Lothar and stars Janet Waldo and Anne Seymour. We've all had odd, unexplainable things happen to us. Sometimes we put them down to tricks of memory, a curious combination of circumstances, or an occurrence that was simply inexplicable, and have then dismissed them from our minds. Perhaps Amy Prentice should have done that, but alas, didn't, when she arrived at the home of her fiancé, Jack Morton, all set to get married, only to have Jack tell her, I've never seen you or heard of you in my life. Goodbye. Wait a minute. Now, wait just you a minute. You heard me, sister. Beat it. Sister? Beat it? Jack Morton, I don't know what this is all about, what but... What is it, Jack? What's wrong? Yes, what seems to be the trouble? Well, this girl claims she knows me. Claims I know you. We're engaged. Engaged to be married. Married? Oh, my dear young lady, you're suffering from some sort of delusion. You bat or you're playing some sort of game. Now, you just get along out of here. Oh, now, now, mother. I mean it, Florence. I'll call the police if she doesn't. No. The poor girl, whatever her problem, looks terribly tired. You'd be tired, too, if you'd come all the way from Midvale in a day coach. Come in. And... Come in and at least have a cup of tea. Oh, I don't think so. Not now. Not after this reception I just got. Well, that's just fine with us. Take off. Jack, how can you act this way? Oh, honey, I don't know what this is all about, but you come on in and have a cup of tea with no. us. No. You get out of here. Go away or I'll call the police. Now, Mother, you know you'll do no such thing. This young woman is obviously in some sort of trouble. And it's up to us to help her if we can. Jack, you pick up her bag and bring it in. And, honey, you come on along with me. I... I, I don't know. Oh, I... nonsense. Come on, dear. All right, Jack, bring the suitcase. Close the door. And now let's all go into the dining room and have some tea. You too, Jack. And you, Mother. Now, what's your name, honey? Amy. Amy Prentice. Well, you sit right there, Amy, and I'll pour tea, and you tell us what this is all about. Tell you... We... You, you act... You all act as if you'd never heard of me. We haven't. Anyway, I haven't. This is some kind of trick. Confidence game. Mother, you... please. Here we are, honey. Nice cup of tea. Now, there's milk and sugar right there if you want them. And a plate of cookies. Now, let me introduce ourselves to begin with. This is Mother Morton, Jack's, that's him, Jack's mother. And I'm Florence Morton, his wife. Wife? Yes, dear. So, you see, you're thinking he's your fiancé. Well, you see, that just can't be so. Is she your wife? Of course she is. Let me tell you once again, I don't know you. I never saw you before in my life. You, you did. You did. We met just two weeks ago at the conference at State Teachers College. Now, what in blazes would I be doing at, at a teacher's college? Well, you're an English.
English teacher, aren't you? English teacher, my foot. I'm an insurance salesman. But you can't be. You can't be. Uh, unless you don't have a twin brother or, or a double or something. No, Amy, he doesn't. Yes, she very well knows, Mother. Amy, why don't you tell us what you think this is all about? I mean, start at the beginning and, well, tell us the whole story. Perhaps we can help in, I don't know, in some way. But he knows what happened. Whether he, he does or not, you just tell us in your own words. Well, I'm an English teacher, Midvale High School. And I attended the conference of English teachers at State Teachers two weeks ago. On the third day, when I was having lunch in the cafeteria... Look, excuse me, uh, there, there seems to be a shortage of tables. Do you mind if I sit down here? No, no, of course not. Please. Thanks. I'll just put my tray down here. There we are. Or rather, here I am. <laughs> uh, my name's Mort, Jack Morton. Amy Prentice. Where are you from? Midvale. Newark. High school English. You know, Chaucer, Shakespeare, and all that. Well, we, um have a lot in common. Mm-hmm. Including food. I see you got a BLT on whole wheat, toasted. <laughs> you too. <laughs> uh, mayonnaise. Mayonnaise. <laughs> hey, are you uh, enjoying the conference? Oh, yes and no. Well, what's the no part? Well, quite honestly, I, I, I don't go for some of the new teaching methods they're recommending. Yeah. Like letting your students read what they want to read instead of holding them to the curriculum. You too? Me too. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do have a lot in common. Yeah, I should say we do. I'm sure glad I asked to sit at your table. So am I. Uh, Amy, uh, do you mind if I call you Amy? No. And you call me Jack, okay? <laughs> All right, Jack. Well, uh... What I was going to say, it, it's kind of early to ask you for a date, but, well, look, the barbecue tonight. I'm not looking forward to going alone, and I sort of wonder. I wasn't looking forward to it either, for the same reason. <laughs> <laughs> you talk about two minds with but a single thought, two hearts that beat as one. Well, how about it? How about what? Going to the barbecue with me. Look, the steak is going to be New York cut, my favorite. Oh, mine too. I'd love to. It's a date then, Amy? It's a date, Jack. And that was our first date. We saw each other from then on every chance we got every day. And just before the end of the conference, Jack asked me... Jack, you know you did. You, you asked me to marry you. Look, will you make sense? I'm married to Florence. I've been married to her for ten years. Would I ask you or anyone else to marry me? But you did. What do you think I'm doing here? We we arranged for me to come today to meet your mother and, and stay here till we got married over the weekend. What? This is the engagement ring you gave me. Now, wait a minute. Cool it, lady. You could have gotten that anywhere. You could have bought it yourself. Amy, I know you're sincere in thinking you met Jack at that conference and that he asked you to marry him, but, well, it's a, it's got to be some sort of delusion. If it is, how did I know his name and address? That you could have got out of any phone book. I don't care what you say, Florence. This girl is playing some kind of game. I don't think so, Mother. I think she really believes what she says. I believe it because it happened. No, Amy, as I say, it's some sort of delusion. Is the rose garden a delusion? Yeah. The, the rose garden? Your rose garden, Mrs. Morton. Jack told me you love roses... And that you're an expert at growing them. That you even exhibit them and have won prizes. Is that true? Well, yes, but... That window there, that, that picture window, does, does it look out on the backyard where the rose garden is? Why, good heavens, it does, yes. I'll describe it for you. Just as Jack described it for me. There's, there's a brick walk down the center, dividing the yard in half. You enter the walk through a white trellis that's covered with red and white roses. At the far end of the walk, there's a tall... French fence to screen you from the neighbors, and in front of the fence, there's a fountain with a large statue of the god Pan. Is that right? Perfectly. It's unbelievable. I don't see anything unbelievable about it. 
She could have gone out back and looked at my garden before she rang the front bell. Well, yes, that is true. How would I know that Jack's mother exhibits her roses, wins prizes? Oh, that's true, too, Mother. Well, there are plenty of ways she could have found out. Name one. You just named me one. I could name you half a dozen. You could have asked questions around the neighborhood. And there is a record book of prize winners with stories of their backgrounds, their lives. You could have just made an educated guess. You Personally, I don't think this poor child did any of those things. Then you explain how she knows. I can't. No more than she can. I have. Jack told me about that garden and all about his mother, but... Well, it, it doesn't matter now. Well, what do you mean, Amy? I mean, I don't understand it, but obviously Jack doesn't want to marry me. Can't marry me. And regardless of what I think, what I believed happened, and it did, I know it did. Well, it doesn't matter. Well, where are you going? Back where I came from, of course, Midvale. Thanks for the tea. I'll be happy to take your bag to the oh, door. Oh, just and... one minute. Just one minute. Amy, you can't go back to Midvale today. Why not? There's only one train from Newark to Midvale. I happen to know because I have a friend I visit in the asylum there. And that leaves at 9.30 in the morning. Well, I'll stay somewhere. At a hotel. You do no such thing. You'll spend the night here. With us. I can't have that. I won't have it, Florence. I'm not letting some tricky little character like her stay the night under my roof. Mother, we can't put her out. That simply wouldn't be decent. Human. No, I insist. She's got to spend the night, have a good refreshing sleep, and then I'll drive her to the station after breakfast in the morning. Well, I, I, I really can't put you out like this. Not another word, Amy. I won't take no for an answer. Now, let me show you to the guest room. Bring her suitcase, Jack. Okay. You come along too, Mother. You don't need me. Oh, yes, we do. What for? Why, uh, I think it's going to be a chilly night. And you know where the extra blankets are. So do you, Florence. Please. Come on, Mom. I'm... I'm really sorry to bother you like this. And, uh, look, you, you needn't trouble about an extra blanket. The weather's warm, really. Here we are. Oh, wait. Wait. Before you open the door. Yes? Jack described the room where I'd be staying, the, the guest room. I can tell you exactly what it looks like. Oh, you couldn't possibly. There's a big dormer window, like all old houses have, and, and chintz curtains. Good heavens. A big easy chair with an ottoman. The bed has a canopy, and the rug, it's a woven rug, oval, with a design of roses. But this is, this is incredible. Oh. Jack, you didn't meet Amy at State Teachers, did you? You didn't propose marriage? Oh, come off it, Florence. Well, this is the strangest thing because... Well, Amy, you've described the room perfectly. Now, here, see for yourself. Yes. Just as Jack described it. Well, there's no understanding this. I, I, I just can't fathom it. You must have second sight. Or something. No, I... No more talk now. You're tired and upset. And what you need is a good nap. Dinner won't be for several hours. I'll call you when it's ready. Thank you. And you can look forward to dinner. We're having steak. New York cut, no less. Jack adores steak. New York cut. Amy. Jack. Quiet, I said. Just listen to me, darling. Darling? The dearest, most darling girl in the world. But uh... Look, there's no time to explain. It's two o'clock in the morning, and I've got to get you out of here fast. I, I can't take a chance on my wife waking up and finding me gone. You are married. Florence is your wife. Yes, but we did meet, you and I, and I do love you and want to marry you. Oh, marry me when you're already married? Please, stop talking. Get this robe on. We've got to move fast. <laughs> Where are we going? Out of this house. In Robin's slippers? Look, I'll explain later. Come on now, oh. let's go. Where? Go where, Jack? Florence. Your wife, standing in the doorway. At, 
axe in her hand. Oh, Jack. Jack, what does this mean? What indeed does it mean? Why does Jack want to get Amy out of that house as fast as he can? What is Florence, his wife, doing with an axe in her hand? One thing is virtually sure. However incredible events for Amy have been up to now, they are as nothing to what lies ahead. I'll be back shortly with Act Two. K. Chesterton was fond of saying that an adventure was merely an inconvenience viewed in the right light. Perhaps then one may say that the incredible is merely the credible viewed in the wrong light. However that may be, to come to the home of a man you expect to marry and to discover him already married and on top of that to find yourself facing his wife at two in the morning, with an axe in her hand. Really, Amy? Mother was right about you, after all. You are playing tricks. Oh, no. No, I, I assure then you... Then what I... is my husband doing in your room at two o'clock in the morning, and you in your nightgown? I, I, I can explain. Do that, Jack. Please do. First, give me the axe, Lawrence. Tempted to ask where you'd like it. Just explain your presence in Amy's room, Jack. Well, I, I thought I heard her cry out. I thought she might be in trouble. I, I came to see if she was all right. It's ju just a nightmare, Florence. I, I had a nightmare. That's hardly surprising with all you've been through. Well, I, I guess so. Could I have the axe now, Florence? Oh, of course. Here. You see, I heard you cry out too, Amy. You, you did? Yes. And I thought there might be an intruder in the house. Burglar, something like that. You keep an axe in your bedroom? Well, it's an old house. Very old. Our bedroom, Jack's and mine, has a fireplace in it. We keep a small supply of wood there. And sometimes it has to be split. You didn't think I was going to chop you, did you? No. I... Well, Jack and I will go back to our bedroom now. Come, Jack. Oh, and Amy. Yes? Try not to have any more... Nightmares. The more toast and marmalade, Amy. Oh, thank, thank you. No coffee, then. No. Uh, frankly, I'm I'm anxious to get started. Get get that train for Midvale. I I don't want to miss it. You won't miss it. Plenty of time. Well, there really isn't, Florence. There's just under half an hour, and it takes fifteen minutes to reach the station. I know. I know. So, uh, I think we'd better get started, Amy. Your bag's packed and in the hall. So let's go. You. Well, I'll drive at the station. I was planning to do that. No, I'll do it. No, Jack, no. Waste of gas. I mean, waste. You take her or I take her. What's the waste? I have to go into town shopping to do for the weekend. And you don't. I see. I can do my shopping at the same time. Yes, I see. So that'll mean only one round trip instead of two. I said I see, Florence. Saves gas. Yes. Well, uh, if we're going to get started... Oh, but first you must see the Rose Garden. No, no, I... Oh, but I... yes. I mean, how can you even think of leaving without seeing it? In some unaccountable way, you do know what it looks like. But, well, if I were you, I'd want to see it for myself. But there, there isn't time. Of course there is. Take a moment. Let's all go to the Rose Garden. And aren't these lovely? Hybrid teas. Yes, but, uh, you know, time... And this rambler. Isn't it gorgeous? Yes. Oh, yes, you're, you're certainly to be complimented, Mrs. Morton. Thank you. Oh, but this isn't her god, you know. It's mine, really. But Jack said... Jack said. Jack couldn't have said anything. How could he? Since you didn't meet him till yesterday. Or did you? Did you meet her at State Teachers, Jack? I've told you I never saw her before in my life. Yes. But I've been thinking... You know how I am? Always thinking. Sometimes my head aches terribly. Oh, please. Uh, we're going to miss my train. I think about so many things. 
I know you take this rose garden. She gets the credit for it. Always has got the credit for it. But I'm the one who designed it, created it, planted it. Even your father had to admit it was beautiful, Jack. Remember? Yes. Oh, how that man hated me, reviled me, scorned me. But even he admitted that my rose garden was a thing of beauty. Florence, we've got to go. Now. If Amy's going to get her train. Yes. Oh, yes. But first, I wanted to see these floribunda. Aren't they gorgeous? They are, yes. Note the deep, dark red of the blossoms. Very dark. Very deep red. Lovely. Do you know why? Cultivation, I suppose. Blood. Blood? Mr. Morton's blood. Jack's father's blood. This is where we found him. Hacked to bits. Jack, Easy, Mom. I can't Easy, bear Mom. His blood had Florence, poured Florence. onto the soil, into it, saturating it. Would you believe that before that day, these roses had been rather weak, skimpy, subject to all sorts of diseases? But afterwards, they'd literally burgeoned with health and beauty. Would you believe that? Now, look, whether I believe it or not, we can't stay here another second. Why not? My train, that's why not. The only daily train to Midvale. Are, are you deliberately trying to make me miss it? But of course not. What a thing to say. I only wanted you to see the Rose Garden. Well, now that I've seen it, let's go. Please. Whatever you say, whatever you say. I, I'll go along too, Florence. You, Mother? Whatever for? Some... Uh, shopping myself. Well, why not? We'll all go together. You too, Jack. Well, no. I, I'll i stay here. <laughs> not a chance, Jack. Not a chance. Oh, excuse me, but uh, while we're doing all this talking, time is slipping by. I don't want to miss that train. Of course you don't. But before we go, I do want you to know, Amy, what a pleasure it's been having you stay with us. Thank you. Of course, you haven't enjoyed it. Poor dear. But never mind. You're sure to find a husband so attractive, so pretty. Could, could we go now? Come on. Come on, Jack, Mother, Amy, get in the car. We just have time to make the Midvale train. Luckily, as you see, Amy, the garage fronts on the street. Luckily. Well, we can drive right out into the street and not waste time. Drive right straight out. Yes. Now, if the garage was in the back of the house, waste time, a minute or two, and we don't have it to waste. Uh, could could we get started? Oh, you are in a hurry. Well, you said yourself we don't have any time to spare. That's why you don't have to tell me. I- I'm sorry. I should think you would be. Well, here we go. Something wrong? Damp, I guess. Suppose you let me drive, Florence. How can you drive, Mother, if the car won't start? Mm. No time to spare and it won't start. Look, I- I'll get a taxi. By the time a taxi gets here, your call and everything, you'd miss the train. But uh, we're certainly not going to get anywhere this way. The battery's wearing down. Correction. It's worn down. Oh, no. Well, that means I'll never make the train to Midvale. Well, now, I resent that, Amy. You sound as if spending another night with us here would be most unpleasant to you. Oh, no. No, no, I, we I didn't We did mean... try to make everything as pleasant as possible for you. Back in the house, all. Look, uh, if I went down to the corner and got a cab... Amy, yes? do as Florence says. Of course, Jack. Of course. Out of the car. Back in the house, all. Oh, look. Uh, a taxi. A taxi pulling up right in front. Oh, oh, good heavens, I, I forgot. Joe. Joe? Who's Joe? Oh, my brother. All the excitement and all, I, I forgot. He he was coming to give me away. Okay, driver, thanks. Oh, no, Joe, wait. Keep that cab. Driver, don't drive off. Wait. It's all right, driver. Go on. No, no, wait. Please, wait. Joe, hold that cab. Amy, Amy. What driver, in the world is... Driver, wait. Go on. Driver, go on. We don't need you. Well, for criminy's sake, go stay. Go stay. He's gone. He's gone. Amy, 
baby, sis. What is this? Oh, she's all upset. All upset. I'm Florence Morton. How do you do? Oh, uh, Joe Prentice, Amy's brother. <gasps> Amy, Amy, what's... what? You I... understand, Joe. I may call you Joe. Oh, yeah, yeah. But... Amy's all upset. You know how it is, getting married for the first time. Nerves. <laughs> oh, sure. Joe! You Jack Morton? Yes, I am. Ah, oh, glad to meet you, Jack. Great pleasure. And you're, uh, Jack's sister, huh? She's Let's all my... go into the house. Come on now, come on. Have you had breakfast, Joe? I have something on the train. Well, you want more than that. Eggs, bacon, toast, and marmalade, hot coffee. In the house, everybody. No, no. Amy, in the house. Amy, what's going on here? You're all acting like... Well, I, I don't know. You're... Wedding plans, Joe. Wedding plans. Everybody uptight. You understand. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Uh, Florence, is it? Florence. Everybody in. Everybody in. Well, now, here we are. All together once again. Joe. Yeah, Amy? Joe, there's something crazy going on in this house. Something real crazy. Now, Amy, honey. Joe. Joe, listen to me. There's something wrong. I don't know what it's all about. I don't know. I don't know what's happening, but Jack says he never saw me before in his life. What? And never proposed marriage to me, and then he did. And she, her, his wife, she came to my bedroom with an act of Hold it, for Jiminy's sake. Hold it. Amy, you're not making sense. Oh, I know I'm not, because what's happening here, what, what, what's happened to me, he doesn't make sense Look, either. Will somebody explain this? I'll explain it. Mr. Prentice, Joe. A mistake of some kind has been made. A mistake? Your sister, she... Well, I, I haven't wanted to spell this out in so many words, but since you're here now and can take care of her... Joe, I'm afraid your sister is crazy. You're afraid my sister is crazy? Well, she... She came here yesterday afternoon, arrived just out of the blue, out of nowhere, saying she'd come to... Marry my husband. You don't mean him? Yes, him. Jack. My husband. He's your... My husband, Jack, yes. Somehow your sister has got into her head that they met at teacher's conference. And he proposed marriage, but... Well, it's ridiculous. You, Jack. You say you never met Amy? No. Jack. Last night in my room, Now, you hold said... it, Amy. Just hold it. Let me try to get this thing straight. You didn't meet her at a teacher's conference? State teacher's college? Not me. I'm an insurance salesman. This is plain screwy. Amy, if you say you met him and he asked you to marry him, I say you met him and he asked you to marry him. But he says... I that... never saw her, talked to her, knew anything about her until she arrived here yesterday. I see. Well, either you're a liar, Mr. Morton, or you're crazy. If anybody around here has lost his marbles, you have, not her. Now, Amy, what do you want to do about this? I just want to get out of here. And that's what we'll do. Where's the phone? Over there, but I'm afraid Let you're... me just call a cab and we'll blow. You can't. You going to stop me? The phone's out of order. Now, we'll see about that. That's dead, all right. No wonder. The wire's been pulled out of the box on the wall. Now, what is going on here? Who pulled those wires out of the box and why? Come on, damn it, answer me. Who and why? You're like Jack's father, all male. He was a Taurus, a bull. Strong, masculine, like you. He thought, like you. What are you, some women's liver? I'm me. I'm Florence Morton. And I don't take anything from you or anybody else. His father learned that the hard way. What do you mean, the hard way? She killed him with an axe. Killed him. Killed him. Hacked him to pieces. He had to be killed. I certainly wasn't going to live out my life with him dominating me. Stupid, he called me. Stupid. Like that. One day I said to him, you call me stupid once more and I'll kill you. We're in the garden. Maybe you noticed there's a wood pile in one corner, Amy. Yes. And there was this axe he used for splitting wood. You know what he did? No. Guess. Please. He picked up the axe and handed it to me. Go ahead, he said. Kill me, stupid. 
Was he surprised? Had him to burst. <laughs> to burst. Amy, come on. We're getting out of here. Goodbye, Joe. Goodbye, Amy. Goodbye. This door's locked. It's bolted on the inside. Oh, I thought you knew. You didn't see me bolt and lock it when we came in? All right, give me the key. So you can unlock it? What else? Uh Uh-uh. Now look, you... Joe, please, don't cross her. Please, don't cross her. She'll kill us all. Joe, Joe... Take it easy, Amy. We're not dead yet. Not yet, Joe. Not quite yet. Ever been face to face with a homicidal maniac? With everything stacked against you? Happily, I never have. And hope you never have either. But Amy and Joe are. And so are Jack and his mother. What I can't figure out is why Jack, with a homicidal wife at home, ever proposed marriage to Amy. Well... We'll have the answer to that when I return shortly with Act Three. Terror can be a thing so palpable you can feel it. Clammy to your touch. Ice cold in your veins. A taste of brass in your mouth. Certainly, this is what Amy Prentice feels, along with the Mortons and her brother Joe, as Florence Morton makes all too clear the fact that they are not going to leave the old house on Hilliard Street alive. Look, Florence, I don't get any of this. I don't get any of it except all this hate you got in you. You can't blame my sister for it, and you can't blame me. So we're leaving now. No. Joe, she's got a gun. I can see that, Amy. Question is, will she use it? Yes, yeah, she'll use it all right. You better understand something, Joe. She's a killer, a homicidal maniac. Then what the hell is she doing here? Why isn't she in an asylum? She was. She escaped just a day before I got back from the teacher's conference. Jack. Amy, I am sorry. So sorry. I pretended I'd never seen you before, tried to get you to leave before you set foot in this house because Florence was right there behind me all the time and I knew she'd kill you sooner or later. Kill you. Nine years. Nine long years. They kept me in that place. But I knew. I always knew someday I'd get out. But, Jack, if you're married to her... No, I'm not. Not anymore. I had the marriage annulled a year ago. The authorities agreed Florence would never be cured. So where are these authorities now? Didn't they figure she'd head straight for this house? They telephoned to let me know she'd escaped. Asked me to notify them if she did come here. And all the time I was talking on the phone, she had a gun against my head. You're going to die. You're all going to die. Not if I can help it, lady. You can't help it. There isn't a thing you can do. We'll see about that. One thing I don't believe in is just standing here waiting for you to kill us. Me, I fight fire with fire. Oh? And just how do you think you... Fight fire with fire? Fire! Florence, what are you thinking? Be quiet, Jack. I'm thinking, thinking. Fire, fire. You know, Joe, you've given me the idea I was looking for. I gave you... I've been wondering how to kill you all, all at once. And now I know. Into the kitchen. What for? You'll see, Mother. Into the kitchen, all. And now, Jack. Dear, loving husband, open the cellar door. You're taking us down to the cellar? Putting you down in the cellar, Jack. Open the door. Now, down into the cellar with you. You lead the way, Jack. Look, Florence. Don't you... argue, Jack. Just go. No, we're not... <laughs> My leg! You all right? Oh, Joe! You may be able to fight fire, Joe, but you can't fight bullets. Now, Amy, help your brother down into the cellar. Oh, Joe! Take, take it easy, sister. Oh, oh. Amy. You're bleeding. I'll be okay. Oh. She hit me in the side. Fleshy part. Oh. You better let me have a look at that wound, Joe, okay? Okay. Oh. Let him bleed to death, Jack. 
It'll be easier for him. I'm sorry I can't make it easier for you all. Oh, oh, he's locked us in down here. Is there another door? No, there's not even a window. We're trapped. Absolutely no way out. Is there any way of breaking that door down? Pry on it open. No, maybe. Joe, this is an old house. It's built when they really build them. Break that door down. No way. Oh. Look, uh -uh. Try, try to hold still. It's, it's not that bad, but it's bleeding quite a lot. I've got to stop the bleeding. Look, Amy. Yes, dear. Just around that corner, you'll find a desk. Uh, uh, a desk? Yeah, I have my office set up there. Oh. In the bottom drawer on the right, you'll find a first aid kit. Now, bring it here, will you? Yes. yes. Oh, Jack. Jack, what are we going to do? How are we going to get out of here? Mom, if I had the answer to that. Jack, there's a telephone here on, on your desk. Yeah. With the wires pulled out of the wall box. Florence didn't miss a trick. Oh. Oh, yes. Oh, they are pulled out. Look, hurry with that first aid kit. Here it is, Jack. Here. Thanks. Have you patched up in a jiffy, Joe? Well, much good it'll do you, I'm afraid. Don't lose your nerve. Me, I've been in worse binds than this. Vietnam for one. My work for another. What do you do, Joe? I'm a cop. New York City Police Force. Man, I've been in spots that make this look like... Hey, wait. She's up there. That's not the kitchen. No, it's the living room, right above us. <gasps> what was that? She put something down on the floor, something <gasps> heavy and made of metal. What could it be, Jack? I don't know, unless it's... Wait a minute. What, Jack? What? Metal? metal? Fire? I, I keep a can of gasoline in the garage for the lawnmower. How big a can? Two gallons. Was it full? I'm afraid so, and I'm afraid I'm right. I smell gasoline. Oh, it's dripping down through the floorboards above us. She's going to set the house on fire. She's going to burn it down around our heads. Uh, and kill herself, the poor crazy woman. Florence! Florence, listen to me! Florence, you'll kill yourself! Strike a match and the gasoline fumes, the fumes, Florence, they'll explode. You're right. She lights that stuff. She'll never get out alive. Florence, will you listen? Will you please listen? Oh, oh God, she's done it. Oh. The house this old. Oh. It'll go up like a haystack, a dry haystack. It's all going to die. First <laughs> alive. Oh, no. Oh, no. We gotta try that door. We gotta see when we break it down. Check. Give me a hand. We'll both get our shoulders against it. When I give the word. What? What? I will forget it. The door's hot already. Flames on the other side. <laughs> Even if we got it open, we'd never get out. There's gotta be something we can do. There's got to be. What are the neighbors? Neighbors? Well, they'll see the house burning, call the fire department. Well, what could that do us? They'll rescue us. Get us out of oh, here. Oh, Amy, honey, they don't know we're down here. Oh. Oh. Wait a minute. There's one chance. Just one chance. What, Joe? The telephone. No, no, no. I told you. Florence pulled the wires out of the wall box. We got to see. Can we connect them again? You think you can? Or do you? Jack. Uh. What? Thank God you set up your office down here with a phone. Uh. If we can reconnect those wires. Let's get this wall box open. You got any tools down here? Yeah. Top drawer on my desk. One of those little kits. Here. What do you want? <coughs> uh. Screwdriver. Yeah, here you go. <coughs> Now, get this lid open. Right. Easy, easy. Yeah. It's coming. Oh, right. hurry, Joe. Hurry. Yeah. Pause for the lid. Oh, good. Oh, no. What? What? Three wires. Red, blue, and green. Three poles to attach them to. So attach them. Yeah, but which wire to which pole? It's falling. Oh, it's falling. Oh, it's falling. Oh, it's falling. Oh, Try something. What do you think I'm doing? Let's see. Red to this pole. Blue to this one. Green here. All right, see can you get a dial to one. No, nothing. Try again. Joe, move it. Let's see. Put the red here. Blue. There. And the green on this pole. Okay. Anything, Jack? <laughs> That's it. That's it. I got a dial tone. Well, use it. Get the operator. This is your operator. May I help you? Operator, I'm calling from a burning house. 37 Hilliard Street. <laughs> the fire department's just arriving, but they don't know we're in the cellar. We're in the cellar. <laughs> Oh, 
Amy, what? here. Oh. Fire chief just gave me another thermos of coffee. Have some more. Oh, thanks, Jack. Joe? I've got Joe in the ambulance unit over there. Oh. They're really patching up his leg. Isn't he wonderful? I-, I think I've got the most wonderful brother in the world. Well, I think he's got the most wonderful sister in the world. I'm, I'm sorry about Florence. Lord knows I am, too, but it's better this way. Mom, Mom, are you okay? Even the rose garden is gone. The heat killed everything. Maybe that's better, too, Mom. Oh, how could it be? How? I'm going to see to it you have another house, another rose garden, without the memories that went with this one. Memories we're all going to do our best to forget. So, what began as mystery, created by Florence Morton, ended as tragedy for Florence Morton. And uh, perhaps for the best, as Jack said. She is at peace now, and if in death she has not found a better world, as we very much hope she has, she's at least out of this one, which brought her so much unhappiness. I'll be back shortly. Jack and Amy Morton are happily married now. Amy no longer teaches, at least not in school, because she has two youngsters to keep her more than busy. The boy is named Joe. The girl, Florence. As for Mother Morton, she has another garden. But not roses, vegetables. Well, everything costs so much these days. Our cast included Janet Waldo, Ann Seymour, Lorreen Tuttle, Bill Quinn, and Bernard Barrow. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs>